Greetings, folks. Flying Doctor here. Hope you're doing all right. I thought it was time to update the great tablet tutorial. Over a thousand views, so thanks a lot if you viewed uh, that video. If you do like my content, well, please do uh, yeah, like it, if you see what I mean. Uh, but subscribe, click the bell so that you know when I'm next updating. It's really good to be able to join with you. Yes, Flying Doctor here. And we are going to take a look at the tablet updates. Now, these tablet updates tend to feature within the regular builds. I would strongly advise you that you look at the great tablet tutorial that I did before. And uh, this is an addition to that. Now, what I'm not going to do here is focus on the firefighting variant in particular and the scenario editor. Uh, we'll look at all the variations that are available and we'll also take a pause and look at the military variant. I'll call that up because we've not looked at it before. But yes, I won't be looking at the scenario editor in detail because that has grown so much it's going to take a whole different piece of work. But let's just have a look and refresh ourselves about what is new in the tablet. So here we are, tablet in front of us. And we can already see one or two new icons. Failures and maintenance down here on the bottom. Uh, for example, we talked about the event tester being a really brilliant addition. Glad to see uh, that that is still here. A quick shout out to the Foca H145, particularly those on Discord. And I should stress that what I tell you, you know, I'm not uh, endorsed or sponsored in any way by Hype Performance Group. I just think that this product is a great product and it's good to be part of the community and journey uh, through the joys and challenges of getting used to flying this particular uh, helicopter. So first and foremost, I'm going to click on the uh, aircraft icon here and we'll see one or two changes. Let's start with setup. Um, what you'll notice is we've got a build number here. I'm on build number 308. Do have a look at the build video if you're interested in how to not just install new whole complete builds, but how to upgrade in situ. Uh, and do I encourage you to follow the Discord channel because uh, in addition, yes, to the emails that uh, you'll receive from High Performance Group, um, you'll be able to access very, very quickly uh, the upgrades that you simply lay over in situ. Anyway, so gameplay modes, realistic and arcade still, but arcade gives you an option to switch off or on rotor torque. Rotor torque is that tendency for the uh, helicopter to veer to the right when uh, you lift the collective because of um, uh, the angle of the blades uh, basically and I'm just looking ahead here thinking I might have to just lift up a little bit so just bear with me I'm just going to go into the autopilot mode and uh, click on altitude and increase my altitude somewhat there we go we'll go back in a second yeah I will take that up a little bit up a notch. Up, 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 up. Yeah, that's a little bit more. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm not exactly at best climb speed here, but this should all to do it. Let's just give that a couple of hundred feet. There we are. And a little bit more. We're over Iceland at the moment, by the way, so there we are. So that, I think that should see us. Yeah, that should see us okay for a while. So, yes, let's just drop back uh, to the uh, tablet itself. So, set up. Um, we've got Vortex Ring State on and off. Vortex Ring State, I hear you say, what the heck is that? Well, yeah, I had to do a little bit of research over this. But suffice to say, it's possible uh, to reach a point that even though the blades are splitting, and even though you should get power, you don't get power. And that's because you've managed to create a vortex uh, around the uh, blades. And it's a strange, strange sensation. You may have come across it before because you're thinking there's power here, but the, it feels like the helicopter is just dropping out of the sky. And it tends um, to happen if you are um, hovering, if you're just taking off and you've not got a gradual control on the altitude. Uh, that's one place where it definitely um, happens. The other time it seems to happen is that when you are descending quickly and you're not descending with enough power, um, so uh, what happens is it just feels like the aircraft drops out of the sky. So it's a real addition to the sort of, obviously, the simulation aspect here. We're getting near to a model that's a kind of study level, really, I feel. And, uh, yeah, Vortex Ring State, you can switch it on or off. Aircraft damage now, uh, you can switch on or off as an option. The other options there remain as they were before. Cyclic, dead zone, sensitivity, 
uh, pedals all very helpful let's just have a look at the options page here uh, so on the options page uh, not a huge amount of change uh, rotor downwash effects uh, rotor blur cast shadows they, they were there before weren't they show parking brake on tablet so there's no real change here apart from this AFCS ATT mode follow-up trim which I think is I know I'm supposed to be the flying doctor and geeky and everything but I think it basically means is it's shutting off an element of the uh, autopilot that it should really be constantly on dealing with trim uh, don't turn it off because I turned it off just when I was taken off a minute ago well actually I was about 200 foot uh, above uh, ground level and it just went absolutely haywire so I think I said in the last video don't 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 try and be clever and turn this off uh, but uh, yeah always on here you can have it when it's just on when you're hovering but uh, yeah then you've got uh, various sensors here fuel flow sensors inlet barrier filter anti-collision uh, which can be installed or not installed and terrain awareness so I can click that for installed and uh, there we go a cast there There we are. Oh. There we are. Okay, so that's uh, options. So not a huge amount there. Equipment's where it gets really interesting. Uh, not much changes to the equipment front though, he says. But here's the big one. The biggie is the head management uh, display. Or the um, so if I click this, whoa, look, look. If you click this, uh, you get a heads up display. Uh, so yes and uh, with all the details uh, on it and you can in the manual for that but that is just uh, well worth it um, I could imagine if you're flying say the military variant and you want to be able to uh, look around you can uh, but got all the information on there that uh, you uh, need which is helpful in this scenario it's helpful because I'm not having to look obviously at the display down here to see what's going on um, but uh, yeah so yeah, the um, heads up display, that is new and exciting. Interesting to see how we'll find ways of using that. Uh, chin window plates, to be installed, had those before. There's a second landing light that is possible to have and that can be installed. The glare shields and the sun visors were there before and then there's the Bambi bucket as well. Uh, so yeah, so there's some changes there um, that are welcome, especially the head management, uh, sorry, heads up display. Um, so yeah excellent crew and payload changes here oh just uh, looks a little bit more detailed uh, you've got a, a whole lot of variation about what appears in, you know who appears in what seat so uh, a lot more control here I'm uh, just looking at my attitude here uh, a lot more control uh, around the whether it's a sobo or the hype figures and you can change in seat two to seat three whether it's a worker or a survivor or whatever you can have your own little combinations and make your own scenes and a huge amount of um, much more kind of uh, careful laying out of the options for what you want with hoist uh, selection as well I've not played about with those but um, you know that's going to give you enough uh, to play with uh, we could have a little look here and uh, but firstly I'm going to increase uh, my altitude uh, just uh, bear with me I'm going to jump back to uh, autopilot here and just raise my altitude just a little bit more. Uh, we've hit somewhere particularly uh, hilly. Well, we are in Iceland. Uh, but uh, at the time I thought, oh, I'll be fine. You, you know, it'll be all right. There won't be much flying in front of us. Oopsie doopsie. There we are. Uh, I think I'd like to go up a little bit more, have a bit more confidence. So yeah, just bear with me. What do you reckon? Six thousand five hundred might do it. Um, of course, I don't usually go like right. Okay, let's just click our way back there. So yes, this is the crew and um, payload area. So there's a lot of work um, being done on that front. Let's go back to uh, the tablet and just see what we've got here. So any significant changes? Uh, still got little nav mat. Still got navigraph. Uh, I don't use that. I connect that in with the GTN 750. Uh, documents is still there. No change. Maps is still there. Failures and maintenance is new. So if you click on this, you've got an added uh, dialogue here. So we can simulate failures, should we wish. 
I'm thinking, why would I wish to do this in this in beautiful environment? At the moment? I'm just going to step back and I'm just uh, uh, just bear with me. Yes, this looks absolutely gorgeous. Okay, yeah, we're we were sort of looking much closer, but oh, this is amazing. Anyway, do excuse me, getting distracted just for a moment, just over Iceland here, and uh, this is real time. It's uh, about 22:37. Uh, over in Iceland at the moment, so we're not far away from midnight here. Uh, but um, but yes, and this is live uh, live weather as well. So um, yeah, anyway, oh, just got distracted. Let me just jump down to the tablet again. So we can simulate an engine fire here, uh, an engine failure, a FADEC failure. So the FADEC is basically the electronics that enables enables everything to work together seamlessly and gets the most efficiency out of all the systems working together. So you can get that to fail for you. You can uh, put a failure in on the um, system one or system two hydraulics and uh, fuel system as well and autopilot as well. So um, uh, obviously the idea is that you would then work through some procedures having had a failure and uh, and take things from there. However, I will show you, and this could be risky here because we are not exactly, I don't think we've exactly got a lot of space, but I'm just going to simulate for you and engine failure. My, I'm actually at quite a low speed anyway. Uh, I'm going to simulate an engine fire first. Um, so uh, first, uh, if I click on fire for engine one, you can hear the warning just coming. I hope I oh, might not be able to hear the warning coming. I'll just put up the. There we are. There's our warning coming. I'll switch it off and on again. Now, there's a little bit of work to do. Let's not forget this is a beta project, but I can't actually turn the fire off now. But I can show you something interesting in between. And that is... Oh, just switched it off, that's why. Uh, if I have the fire, well, you'll be able to hear me now, won't you? So if I click on fire... fire. Engine one fire. There's our warning. And we are actually on fire. If you look carefully... You just see... A simulation of the fire. I'm wondering what happens if I... Well, I don't need to wonder what happens. I've seen what happens. It's actually, depending what light you've got, um, you get different effects. So, yeah, the fire will actually show. So we switch that off. Now, this is, um, as I say, I clicked on that before and didn't get a response. So it could be some time. I might just swip off the alarm for you. Okay, an engine failure. Let's get the engine to fail for us. So yeah, we're struggling a little bit with this. It's still a beta project, but right, okay, I can. Uh, it's not quite working for me. I've managed to simulate an engine failure before, that was quite handy, but for some reason, not quite getting the responses I need. So it's a little bit of work perhaps to be done on there. But this is. Don't forget, this is a beta project, but it's kind of showing you what's coming. So we're just going to keep that fire going for a while, and uh, and maintenance is an option here as well. Uh, so fire extinguishing bottles can be charged or empty. You can control the amount of clogging in the engine, uh, which obviously affects performance and damage to the engine as well. And also a huge amount of work I see on Discord being done around gearbox failures as well. So it is possible to stress the aircraft and to get some uh, failures now. And we weren't sort of seeing that uh, before. I uh, might interest you to see this is on the previous term. Um, variant of the tablet anyway that my um, parking brake still on so there we are okay uh, if I click back on that as well so moving around uh, Flappy Bird still here I've still not mastered Flappy Bird EFB Connect we'll look at an entirely separate tutorial web is still there Metar is still there and I highlighted that the alarm's still there sound mixers new and uh, so what you're able to do is to increase the volume we'll turn up again hopefully we'll probably still have the warning I oh, know the, the warning's gone, but we're able to, I think in theory, or work being done, rotor blade slap, uh, crew voice audio, when it comes, you'll be able to address the levels of this. So lovely little additions there by the height performance group. Uh, excellent. Okay, so sound mixers, new missions. I'm not even, well, I will, can't help myself, but um, we've got a nice little map there. Map's improved. Be interested to see... 
um, how the missions has improved. There's the whole they've done a massive amount of work. Much of the conversation on Discord is around excitement about engineering your own missions in the scenario editor, and uh, I I will look at that again. And we did a big demonstration of it sort of last time. It's see, I think it's changed and become much more flexible and uh, easier to work with. Certainly, um, the scenario editor has really improved. Looks like a kind of you know much more sort of uh, professional level uh, product uh, before. But we've got our missions here with a map uh, inviting us to fly to an activity. Presume that we can zoom out as usual. There we are. We've got our library here. And you need to connect to the scenario as before. Um, crew walk around. We talked about that before as well. Uh, I'm wondering what this is. And so, ah, oh, this is a really interesting addition. Look at this. So lots of beginning to cater for um, PCs that perhaps don't have uh, the uh, kind of uh, power that you need to have everything in, in ultra high uh, definition. So you can change the rate at which the map is updated. They can change the map resolution. Uh, you can change um, the smoke flares, whether they're on or off. And uh, uh, mission entry markers can be high visibility on the map. So, And also mission fire quality can be low or high. So that's a really good sort of addition uh, because it's uh, giving much more uh, you know, selectivity and ability to customise uh, the um, uh, scenarios to what your machine is capable of. And yes, just looking at the event tester, um, as far as I can see, and I'm only remembering this uh, from uh, from way back, so it's just my memory, but it looks to me like the events tester has been updated, so you can control virtually uh, any aspect of the aircraft with a click. Um, uh, originally, this was to test keyboard bindings, uh, you know, um, but um, I think this, as I said before, I thought this was an excellent addition uh, to uh, the sim itself. I noticed the uh, center console. There are some new things here that I'm I'm seeing. Center console. His clip. Um, I'll look up what that exactly is and center console weather radar and test and uh, and stuff that I'm seeing on here that I wasn't seeing before and, and a whole range of options that weren't necessarily there before. I'm pretty sure, especially when I get to the end here, equipment um, set up. You know that's another route to do this week it's easy enough to do it of course through the tablet um, but um, itself but rather than the events test uh, but uh, yeah so uh, these uh, flight display buttons MFD soft keys all here they interest that interest me but it just shows me that there's some considerable work being done as well and look at all these these I think are new as well for example you know um, so yes yeah, so excellent job I think from a height performance group and that's just merely on the tablet uh, don't forget if you kind of enjoyed this just as an introduction so well worth well worth installing uh, the new versions and also the insight upgrades as well once again if you've not had a chance to have a look at just that quick uh, illustration I'm sure most people are kind of competent in it but for some it might just give you a little bit of confidence if you bought the h145 anyway you'll be used to just installing the base packs um, and then the action pack with it but there's one or two just hints about um, that I found ha um, really helpful that you'll be able to see on that other video as for direction finder no idea I think that's going to come off later but anyway folks I just um, <coughs> hope that was helpful as I say, well worth the upgrade. Take care, stay safe.